So we're going to do a rock, paper, scissors program to kind of demonstrate some things you can do for your final project, or you could submit the rock, paper, scissors for half credit. So I'm doing this in Replit. This is an online Java compiler. And uh, you just go to rep repl.it and it takes you through. And if you actually create an account, it will save all your, your stuff. So I'm just going to do new Replit and I'm going to choose Java. Then it gives you a place to type in what you're going to do. Rock, paper, scissors. And to pass the time. That's our game to pass the time. And when you hit create, it will start you off with your basic project. It will have your main and a, a simple system.out.print hello world. We're going to change this to say uh, rock, paper, scissors. Now we're going to need a couple of imports. We're going to import both of them. I'm going to say Java import java.util. And I'm going to do a star semicolon. And that means it's going to import all of the items that are in this util folder. Well, I'm going to be using two. I'm going to be using a scanner. That way we can read in from the keyboard, from the, the command prompt. And I'm also going to be using a random number generator. So let's just declare those right now. And both of these are part of the util library. I'm going to call my scanner console equals new scanner. And this reads from system.in. And then I am going to have my random number generator. I'm going to name it generator equals new random. Okay, I'll also need a couple of variables. And just to keep things so they're not so confusing, I'm going to use a couple of constants. This is already telling me I have an error, isn't it? No, it looks like it's okay. All right, so I'm going to put in uh, an int to represent rock. And that's going to be 1. And I'm just going to copy and paste that in a couple of times for paper and scissors. Uh, that way, instead of having to remember that rock is 1 and paper is 2 and scissors is 3, P-A-P-E-R, I can just refer to the word rock, paper, or scissors. And really, it's kind of arbitrary. I could put in random numbers if I wanted. But this is keeps it nice and consistent. So I've got rock, paper, and scissors. Those are just little constants I'm going to use so I can make my code easier to read. I will also need a variable for the, the choice that the computer uses. Are they choosing rock, paper, or scissors? And then the choice that the user is choosing. Are they doing rock, paper, or scissors? So int user choice, and I have a computer choice. Now, uh, we want this to continuously repeat. We're going to let the user choose uh, rock, paper, or scissors, but we're also going to give them a fourth option. So if they choose not to play at all, then they could say negative one to quit. So I am going to do a little do while loop in here. And I want it to go at least one time because I do want to prompt them, hey, do you want to play this game kind of thing. Um, so we need it to repeat at least one time. So I'm going to do a test at the bottom uh, while loop. And I'm going to keep going so long as the user choice is greater than zero. If they do anything less than zero, so like negative one or even negative 10, then that means it will fall out of this loop and they will no longer be playing. And we can give them a little prompt that says system dot dot out dot print line. Thanks for playing. There we go. Okay, so now for the meat and potatoes kind of of this program, we do need to prompt the user to enter in rock, paper, or scissors. So I'm going to tell them one is rock. And then I'm going to do a little end line character. That way it puts the next thing on the next line. So two is paper. If they type in a two, it means they will have chosen paper. If they choose three, that's going to be scissors. And then a negative one to quit. So that's all it's done is it's just printing out a little menu that says rock, paper, or scissors, or type negative one to quit. Now we need to read in from the command prompt. We need to use our console vari variable that we created right here. Let's make this bigger so you could see this code all in one line. That makes it a lot easier. Okay, so I'm going to say user choice. 
I had typed it in with an uppercase C. If I could spell choice, equals console dot next int. That way it reads in the next int from the commands prompt. Now at this point, our, our loop will work. It will keep repeating this over and over, but it just won't let them play rock, paper, or scissors. Now we're going to have the computer choice go. So I'm going to set the computer choice to a random number. Our random number uses our generator up here. Dot next int. I want a random number. It has a range of three but I want it to start at one. So that will create a random number between one and three. Now I can use my if statements to tell me who wins in these particular scenarios. I'm gonna start off if I have chosen, so user choice equals rock. Well, if I've chosen rock, there's three possible choices for the computer choice. So I'm going to put an if statement in, inside of my if statement to handle each of the three possible choices for the computer. The computer may have chosen rock. And once again, these are just my constants up here. It's just comparing it to one, two, and three, really. But it makes it so much easier rather than saying one, two, or three. It makes it easier for me to read rock, paper, or scissors. So if the computer chose rock, we're going to put a system.out.print statement that says, well, we had rock versus rock. So tie game. Okay, now rather than typing all that again, I'm going to copy this inner maybe I didn't copy that right, this inner if statement, because I'm going to use something similar. I need that in three times. But this time, instead of an if statement, I want to correlate this with this if statement, not with this outer one. So I'm going to make this inner one become an else if. And I'm going to see if the computer chose paper. If the computer chose paper, I've got rock versus paper. Let's see. Rock, no, paper covers rock, right? So if we chose rock and they chose paper, we have just lost. So we will say, you lose. And well, Matt, I'm just going to copy that if statement in again, because now I'm just going to modify this. I got rock, paper. Last one is scissors. S-C-I-S-S-R-S. Can never spell the word scissors for some reason. Rock versus scissors. Now, if I, I think it's rock, rock beats scissors, right? Because it like pounds it and you pound the scissors. So I'm going to say you win in this situation. Okay. Now, I've gotten all of the choices in, but I've only gotten them in for if the user chose rock. Now I have to repeat all of these statements again, but for if the user has paper and then if the user has scissors. So rather than typing them all again, I'm going to copy and paste them and modify them. Okay, so I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste and I'm going to figure out my tabbing so that this if statement is under this if statement and I can see that these if statements are inside this if statement. Every opening squiggly has a closing in there and so on. Okay, so now since I want this out this if statement to be correlated with this if statement, this second one becomes an else if, just like we did on here. So this is basically one statement, just like this is going to be one big statement. So if the user chooses, now we're on to paper. So if the, if the computer chooses paper, now all we have to do is change these inside statements. We're going to use rock, paper, scissors, but we just have to change who wins and who loses. So this time I have paper. Uh, paper versus rock, and I'm going to copy and paste that in a couple of times. If paper versus paper, that's a tie game. If paper versus rock, that means you lose. This one is you win and so on. So I'm going to let you finish this up because I think you can do this just going by the rules of rock, paper, and scissors to get in, to get these statements correct, but also to get that third else if statement in for if the 